The essence of creativity is figuring out how to use what you already know in order to go beyond what you already think. A quote by Jerome Brunner. So, good day everyone. I am Zandra Kim Partasa again. I'm back. And for today's discussion, um, we will be talking about Spiral Curriculum and Discovery Learning by Jerome Brunner. So, I am a second year student of North Sushetan Campus, taking up Bachelor of Secondary Education major in English. So again, our topic is Brunner's Spiral Curriculum and Discovery Learning. Objectives are, learners will be able to recognize Brunner's Spiral Curriculum and Discovery Learning concepts. Learners will be able to relate Brunner's Spiral Curriculum to Discovery Learning. Learners will be able to apply Spiral Curriculum and Discovery Learning concepts. So, who is Jerome Brunner? Jerome Brunner, um, full name Jerome Seymour Brunner, was an American psychologist and educator who developed theories on perception, learning, memory, and other aspects of cognition in young children, which had a strong influence on the American educational system and helped launch the field of cognitive psychology. So basically, the topics that I will be discussing today are his ideas, and these two are integral to and have a significant impact on his constructivist theory. So actually, his constructivist theory has three methods of representation, which is first, an active representation where learners learn through movement or action. So for example, a child plays um, with a book and then moving on is the second method of representation, which is learners learn through images or icons wherein students tar starts to look at the pictures in the book. And the third one, which is the more um, most complex one is the symbolic, which learners learn through abstract symbols. So, learners then read for research. So, to proceed, what is spiral curriculum? So, a spiral curriculum is one that revisits the same topics over and over again. It contrasts with methods that involve learning something and then moving on, so possibly never to engage with it again. So when students revisit a topic, they consolidate prior knowledge in their memory and build on it over time. So Brunner stressed out that teaching should always lead to boosting cognitive development. Students will not understand the concept if teachers plan to teach it using only teacher's level of understanding. Instructions need to be anchored on the learner's cognitive capabilities. So the instructors or the teachers should be considerate of their learner's capabilities. The task of instructor is to translate information to be learned into a format appropriate to the learner's current state of understanding. So, curriculum should be organized in a spiral manner so that the students continually builds upon what they have already learned. So, Brunner's spiral curriculum is an educational system or, no, I mean, educational approach that involves revisiting the same educational topics on a regular basis throughout a student's education. So um, each time the student visits the content or the topic, she or he gains a deeper understanding of that exact topic or subject. Each, um, the spiral curriculum has the advantage of reinforcing information over time and of using prior knowledge to guide future learning. So actually, um, spiral curriculum works in a way that, um, for example, we as a student 
started with learning alphabets and then after learning alphabets we moved on to learning words spelling then grammar then sentences to paragraph so spiral curriculum instead of focusing for rel relatively long periods of time on specific narrow topics a spiral curriculum tries to expose students to a wide varieties of um, ideas over and over. So actually, there are three key, key principles of spiral curriculum and number one is cyclical learning. So students in cyclical learning should revisit the same topic several times throughout their academic careers. One um, example of this is we learn um, about words again a while ago and then we learn about the categories of words and then we apply those words that we learn into a sentence. So the second principle is increasing depth. So when a student returns to a topic, it should be learned at the deeper level and explore in a greater depth so that the knowledge that we have will be um, added or will be um, clearly understood. And lastly, the, the last key principle is the prior knowledge. So when returning to a topic, a student's prior knowledge should be used so that um, they can build on fo their foundations rather than starting from scratch. So um, prior knowledge is very important in spiral curriculum. So Brunner also has um, principles of instructions. And the first one is, instructions must be concerned with experience and context that makes the student willing and able to learn, or shall we say, the readiness. Second is, instructions must be structured so that it can be easily grasped by students or the spiral organization. And then the third one, which is, instructions should be designed to facilitate extrapolation and or fill in the gaps or going beyond the given information. So examples in the classroom. For example, in mathematics, since in mathematics, spiral curriculum is very um, familiar or um, spiral curriculum is really applied into the subject mathematics. So in mathematics, um, we frequently return to the same topic but add complexity each time. For example, your teacher might start with simple fractions, then move on to more complex fractions, and then finally ask you to add and subtract fractions. So as we can observe, there is a process, there is an improvement from the simplest knowledge to the complex, to the most complex one. So, um, another example is in literacy, wherein we will frequently use the spiral approach in literacy to improve our vocabulary, grammar, knowledge of literary topics, and critical thinking. So, um, um, going back to the math, um, instead of focusing on fractions for an entire year, um, your school will spread out fraction classes out several years. So, as we all can remember, I think fractions are um, taught in grade 6 and then when we go to grade 7, fractions are a little bit harder to understand. So, that is spiral curriculum. It has been break, broke a breakdown, but um, the knowledge will be also increased if this teacher will revisit that topic. So, um, your teacher will assess how well you retain previous information each time you return to fractions and then help you build on that prior knowledge. So again, um, in math, spiral curriculum is very useful. So also, the prior knowledge is very important um, to compare or to consolidate the idea. So, um, again, and 
in literary, I mean in literacy, um, as we all can observe, teachers give us books that are taught, uh, are teaching us from basic to the most complex ones. And um, we will then proceed to discovery learning. So what is discovery learning? Actually, discovery learning refers to obtaining knowledge for oneself. Teacher plans and arranges activities in such a way that students search, manipulate, explore, and investigate. So take note of those words because as we all can observe, those words are very important to um, and are related to the word discovery. So students learn new knowledge relevant to the domain and such general problem solving skills as formulating rules, testing and gathering information, and most discovery does not happen by chance. Students require background preparation. Once students possess um, prerequisite knowledge, careful structuring of material allows them to discover important principles. So, actually, the concept of discovery learning implies that students construct their own knowledge for themselves, or also known as constructivist approach. The role of the teacher should not be to teach information by rote learning, but instead to facilitate the learning process. This means that a good teacher will design lessons that help students discover the relationship between its bits of information. So the instructors here in discovery learning are not um, required to spoon feed the students instead they will encourage the students to discover things all by their own by researching again those words researching manipulating exploring and investigating so what are the students do what are the students doing during um, discovery learning so, students may be researching information, manipulating objects, performing experiments, having discussion or debates, looking at another viewpoint to get an idea, um, asking deeper questions, discussing ideas of knowledge gained or misconceptions with the teacher. Um, in the, um, in the discovery learning, to do this, a teacher must give information, uh, students the information they need, but without organizing for them. The use of spiral curriculum can aid the process of discovery learning as um, the teaching methods that will be used to this is, is inquiry-based process, which focuses on learning through experience and inductive reasoning is also important and as you all know inductive reasoning means using specific examples to formulate a general principle so let's proceed to classroom examples so for example um, in elementary school teachers might use discovery use guided discovery to help students learn animal groups examples mammals birds and reptiles so rather than provide students with the basic animal groups and examples for each the teacher could ask students to provide names and types of animals then the students and teacher could classify the animals by examining their similarities and differences. So, category labels can be assigned once classification are made. This approach is guided by the teacher to ensure that classifications are proper. But, students are active contributors as they discover the similarities and differences among animals. So what are considered 
to be the advantages of discovery learning. Actually, there are many advantages and this may include students are more actively engaged. Yes, that's very right. Students are developing their problem-solving skills as they um, do the experiments. Students are taking responsibility for their learning. Students are developing their creativity as they explore or discover. Students are more motivated to learn information because they have the freedom. Students are independent because they are encouraged to learn by their own. Students may, students may have to work with others to discuss, analyze, and argue knowledge or problem, problems with understanding. Yes, um, by analyzing with other persons, you can, you can you know, um, learn also from them. So, students also, um, students learning experiences and content can be geared more towards the student's abilities. So, um, as a summary of my two topics being tackled or being discussed, um, I, Jerome Bruner's Spiral Curriculum approach emphasizes the importance of re-engaging with ideas over time in order to keep them fresh in our minds and build on ideas consistently. It is founded on three guiding principles, which is the cyclical learning, the increasing depth with iteration, and third, learning by building on prior knowledge. So don't forget that prior knowledge is really useful in spiral curriculum. Um, and the method also emphasizes the open-ended nature of learning. In other words, it demonstrates how learning is an ongoing lifelong process. Well, it is widely accepted as an appropriate approach for long-term school curriculum design. Its limitations include the risk of curriculum becoming too rigid and crowded, as well as education having, educators having to focus on reteaching content that was not taught well or was forgotten the last time the topic was taught. So, always remember that um, learning becomes more meaningful when students accept or in their learning environment rather than listening or listen passively to teachers so again i will go back to my quote um, in the introduction that the, is, the essence of creativity is figuring out how to use what you already know in order to go beyond what you already think so prior knowledge increasing depth and cyclical cyclical learning so that's all for today's discussion i hope everything is clear and by the way the references are present in my presentation and if you have some questions just comment it down below don't forget to like share and subscribe to my youtube channel and that would be a great help so that's all for today and goodbye. So see you on the next vlog.